I'm Michael Gordon. Welcome to our monthly Agri Update. Well, we've generally seen some good conditions for our Agri exports in, the, in recent times, though there have been a couple of notable exceptions. The common thread at the moment is China, which is either the biggest or the fastest growing market for many of our farm products. Now, China's economy has been slowing for a while, and its manufacturing sector in particular has been hit really hard as the trade war with the US has dragged on. What wasn't so clear was how that would affect the Chinese consumer, which is where a lot of our exports go to. And the evidence to date suggests that they've probably held up a bit better than we expected. So firstly, dairy prices have been picking up in the last few auctions. Whole milk powder prices are now sitting just below their long-run average of about $3,200 US dollars a tonne. And that's been on the back of an upward trend in volumes as well. Now, Fonterra is sticking with its forecast range for the milk price for this season. Uh, they have a midpoint of $6.75 per kilo. That would be one of the better payouts in history, though we think the dairy farmers would probably still be cautious on the back of something like that, as they are facing a range of other cost and regulatory pressures. Horticulture continues to go from strength to strength. As the exports for the season start to wind down, the trade figures show that we saw a, a modest lift in prices and volumes for both apples and for kiwifruit. And meat prices have been picking up recently, as we expected. As African swine fever has ripped through China's pig population, it's created extra demand for other types of protein like beef and lamb. Now for the not so good. A few months ago we saw a sudden plunge uh, in log prices going into China. Since then, prices have stabilised and even risen a little, but that's only happened because shipments into China from New Zealand and some other countries have been cut back sharply. Now we always said that the impact on New Zealand would be not so much through the prices, but through employment effects as we see job losses in harvesting and in downstream activities. And that's still likely to be the case at current price levels. Talk to you next month.